Good morning, everyone. And today is our day two in our Java real time project development. In the yesterday session, we discussed about what are the prerequisites in order to attend this course and what is the course content, what are the modules that we are going to learn as part of our course, and what is the information related to the course also that we discussed in the last session. So today we are going to talk about what is software project. What is software project guys? Okay. And why we need to develop these software projects. Okay. And the next one, we are going to talk about types of software companies. How many types of software companies are available? And what is the interview process in the software companies? Okay, good. So here, what is a software project? Project is nothing but collection of programs. Software project is nothing but collection of programs. So we are developing so many projects, right? So why we need to develop these software projects? Software projects are used to reduce human errors. So software project nothing but collection of programs. When we are talking about any project, collection of programs is called as software project. Okay. Why we need to develop this software project? Software projects are used to reduce human efforts. So by using these software projects, we can simplify human's life. So here, software projects are used to reduce human efforts. So what is the example for reducing the human efforts size? So online banking. So earlier, if you want to transfer the amount, then you should go to the bank, you should fill up the form, you should stand in the queue, then you need to talk to that bank employee to do the amount of transfers. But today, Google Pay, Phone Pay, Net Banking, Mobile Banking, lot of softwares available where you can transfer amount from one account to another account within fraction of minutes. And the next one, tickets booking. Okay. So earlier, if you want to book a train ticket, we should go to the railway station and we have to book the ticket. Today, IRCTC project is available. So within fraction of seconds, you can book the train tickets also. And the next one, online shopping is available. Earlier, if you want to purchase a mobile, you should go to the mobile store. But today, so within your, uh, by sitting in your house, you can purchase the mobiles, you can place the order by using online shopping. So like this, there are so many software projects are available. They are used to reduce human efforts and simplify human's life. And simplifies human's life, right? Software project, nothing but collection of programs. And these software projects are used to reduce human effort and simplifies human's life. Now here, we are having several types of software projects. Guys. So we have, we can divide, we can divide. In the IT industry, there's so many companies are developing the software projects, right? So tomorrow, when you go for any company, when you go for any company as a Java developer, we can see three types of projects. We can see three types of projects in companies. So what are those three types of projects in the companies? First one is craft development projects, right? So I'm not talking about standalone application, web application, distributed application, mobile application. You already know that. Okay. So tomorrow, when you join in the company as a Java developer, so you will be you will be joining in a project also in the company, right? So in that company, you can see three types of projects, guys. You can see three types of projects in the companies. First one is scratch development project will be available. And second one, maintenance projects will be available. Okay. Maintenance projects will be available. These projects are also called as support projects, guys. And the third one, third category, we can see migration projects also. Migration projects also will be available. So if you go to any software company, they will be dealing with these three types of projects. So first category is scratch development projects. What is the meaning of scratch development project? Scratch development project, nothing but a fresh project, guys. 
client has given the new requirement. So based on the client requirement, we are going to analyze that. We will design that and we will start the developing from the very beginning level. The complete setup we are going to do and we are going to start developing that project from the very basic from login page, registration page, dashboard, everything we are going to create from the scratch. Such a kind of a projects are called as scratch development projects. And in the same company, you can see second category of the projects, nothing but maintenance projects will be available. What is the meaning of maintenance projects? The project development already completed. Customers are already using our application, but we are maintaining that project. We are providing support for that project. So what is the meaning of that maintenance and support? So client may give some new requirements in the same application that is called enhancements. Okay. So when you go for a maintenance projects, client may ask to change the requirement Whatever the functionality is available in the project, client is asking to change the requirement based on his business model. So when you are working on maintenance project, so daily activities will be like change requests will be available. That means already functionality available. Client want to change this functionality according to his new ideas. And next one, in the existing project only, client is asking to implement some new functionality enhancements will be available. So already we delivered the project to the client. Client is already using that application. Now client having some more requirements. Client want to add some new functionalities in the existing application. That is called enhancements will be available. So enhancement nothing but adding the new functionalities in the existing project. And the third category, bug fixing will be available. Okay, application is live. People are accessing our application. So there are there is there is a chance of getting some issues in the running application. So some team is required in order to monitor that application, in order to monitor that application and identify any problems are there in the application execution process. Is there any bug available in the application? Then do the root cause analysis for that bug, then fix that bug, then deliver the latest code to the production. So this kind of activities will be available when you go for maintenance project. Okay, and the third category will be available, which is called as migration project. So what is the meaning of migration project? Convert the project from one technology to another technology. Okay, so so many telecom applications, insurance applications, banking applications developed 20 years ago. So 20 years ago, those projects are developed by using some old technologies like Cobol, okay, Pascal, and some projects developed by using this IBM mainframes technology and all that stuff. But today, all those technologies got outdated. Now, what companies has to do to run those applications? So you can't find Cobol developers, okay, you can't find mainframes developers nowadays because those technologies are outdated. People are not learning those technologies. So maintaining that old project with the old technology is very challenging task for the company. So that is the reason what companies are doing now, what are the old projects they have, which is developed by using old technology. Now they are migrating them into latest technologies like Spring Boot, microservices and all. So such a kind of projects are called as migration project. Migration project means already the project is available. They developed it, but using some old technology. So if you want to maintain that project for a long time with old technology, very difficult because Manpower will not be available to maintain that project for a long time. So that is the reason companies has to migrate the project from old technology to latest technology. Such a kind of projects also we can see. So migration means converting the project from one technology to another tech. Okay. So if you go to any software company, whether it is a startup company or mid-sized company or top level MNC company. So they will be dealing with several projects in the company, right? Those projects we can categorize into three parts. First one is called scratch development. Scratch development, nothing but a fresh project. So from very basic level, we are going to develop that project. And the second category is called a maintenance project. That means already project is completed. On, on that project, we are providing support for the client. So client may give some change request. Client may ask some new functionality to be implemented. 
And if any bug is available in the application, we need to fix that. So such kind of support is required for every project now. So if you see, so many projects are already running, like Facebook, Gmail, LinkedIn, Instagram, Naukri. So, so many projects are IMCPC, SBI Net Banking, HDFC Net Banking. So many projects are running. Do you think that those projects are completed so we don't need to provide any support for those projects? SBI Net Banking application is available. Do you think that? So, do you just can you guess how many people will be working on the SBI project till today? Project is already available from so many years. We are using SBI net banking. We are doing transactions. Okay. But do you think that? So people are still supporting for SBI banking project in the company. So can you guess how many people will be working for the SBI bank project today in the market? In the company TCS company. Can you guess that count? Can you guess that count? Hundreds, thousands of people will be available. Project is completed. Project is completed. But still, there is a SBI team in the TCS company to support that project. Support means, so making some changes to the existing project, adding some new functionality to the existing project, fixing the bugs available in the project. Okay? So that maintenance projects will be available in the company. And when you see, guys, in the software industry, scratch development projects are only 10%. So, scratch development projects are 10%. And here, 75% of the projects are under maintenance only. So, if you go for a company, 99% you will be working in the maintenance project only. Because 75% of the projects in the IT industry are under maintenance only. Okay? And these migration projects are 15%. So, all the old projects that companies are having, they are migrating these old projects into latest technologies. So tomorrow, once you get selected in the interview, once you join in the company, so most of the chances are there to get into maintenance project because in every company, this kind of maintenance projects are available. They may ask you to change the existing functionality in the project based on the client requirement. They may ask you to implement some new functionality as enhancement in the existing project. They may ask you to check the bugs in the application and fix the bugs. Okay. Now, so here guys, if you join, if you join in the company, which type of project that you would like to join? So tomorrow, once you join in the company, what type of project you want to join out of these three? Scratch development project or maintenance project or migration project? Which project you like to join? Come on. I want you to comment. I want you to comment, guys. Please, guys, are you with me? Don't sleep every morning. Fresh mind. Please involve in the class. I need your response. I love you. And the most important thing for this project development course, don't join the classes from your mobile. If you join from your mobile, then you can't answer the questions in the class. Okay? So I have seen many people they will be attending the classes from their bed only by using mobile. That's not a good practice, guys. Please wake up. Please join the classes from your laptop so that you will have option to respond to the questions in the class. Okay, good. So we are trying to understand what is software project and why we need to develop a project. So collection of the programs we are going to call as one software project. So many software projects we are developing in the company nowadays because software projects are used to reduce human efforts and simplifies human's life. Okay. So here, online banking we are seeing, tickets booking we are seeing, online shopping we are seeing, all these projects are simplifying the human's life. And we can see three types of projects in the companies. Okay. Scratch development projects will be available. Maintenance projects will be available and the migration projects will be available. Scratch development project, nothing but it is a fresh project. Completely from the beginning, we are going to develop this application. But they are only 10% in the units. Next category, maintenance project is available. They are 75%. Most of the projects in the IT industry are under maintenance. Okay. So in the maintenance project, what kind of work will be available? 
change request will be available, enhancement will be available, and bug fixing also will be available. Third category of the projects, migration projects. Migration project means converting the project from one technology to another technology is called as migration projects. Are you clear with my point? Now, some people are saying that they want to go with the scratch development project. Some people are saying that they want to go with the maintenance project. Some people want to go with the migration project. Okay. But my personal opinion, guys, when you join in the scratch development project, right, there will be a lot of learning scope. When you go for scratch development project, lot of learning scope will be available. Technically, you will become very strong if you join in the scratch development project because you will understand from very beginning what is happening in the project, what is the architecture of the project. So everything, project repository creation, project structure creation, security implementation, design pattern implementation, database design, database implementation, everything you will see from the very beginning, your involvement will be very high in the project development process. In the SDLC model, you will involve in all the phases of the SDLC. So that's why if you go for scratch development project, you can learn so many things, guys. You can become all-rounder in the project development process. You will see front-end development, you will see back-end development, you will see integrations, you will see the testing, you will see the deployment. So everything you can observe, everything you can learn, if you join in the scratch development project, lot of learning will be available. You will get lot of learnings when you go for scratch development project. Technically, you will become very strong when you join in the scratch development project. Okay, good. Next one, maintenance projects are available. Maintenance projects, nothing but code is already available. Some Somebody already developed the code. You need to understand the code which is already implemented by the other developer. You need to execute the code. You need to identify where is the problem. You need to fix that means you need to make the changes in the existing application. So when you want to make the changes in the existing application, lot of analysis is required. Directly, you can't go and change one method in the project. If you change one method, it may impact on the some other functionality. Lot of impact analysis we have to do before making any changes in the existing application. And sometimes it is difficult because we need to understand the code which is written by other developers. Okay, directly you can't go and fix the bug. Directly you can't go and change the functionality. You can't go and change your method. You can't change the method parameter signatures, method logic. So lot of impact analysis is required when you are working on the support project. So when you go for the support project, lot of time you need to spend to debug the existing code and understand the behavior of the existing application. Understand the execution flow, understand the code that is written by other developer and according to that, you need to make the changes. Okay, so in the support projects, right, learning curve will be less, guys. So because everything is already there, you joined in a project which is already complete. What is your task now? Make some changes in the existing project. Identify where is the bug. Identify root cause of the bug. So lot of time you need to spend on the analysis only when you go for maintenance projects. That's why learning scope is learning scope will be less when you go for maintenance project. You will not get the picture of the complete project architecture because everything already complete. Everything already completed. You are joining in the project which is already complete. So they will give you daily tasks. You need to debug the code. You need to analyze where is the problem. And you need to do impact analysis. And if you make a small change, you need to perform the regression testing. So if you make a small change, where it is impacting. So a lot of time you need to spend for the analysis only when you go for the support projects. Okay. So learning curve is very less when you go for support project. But learning curve will be very high when you go for scratch development project. Because so doing the project from the beginning is a good thing for the developer. Because everything we will write from scratch with our own mindset, we will start the coding part. Okay. And coming to 
migration projects. So in the migration project, already project streams will be available, project functionality available, technology will be changing. Technology will be changing. So here, when you go for the migration project, you no need to think about the design. You no need to do any creative thinking here, guys, because already running project is there. You are migrating that the business logic already there. Business logic already there. You need to migrate it from one technology to another technology. So, so here in the migration project also, some type of learning scope will be available because we are building the project with a different technology. But so analysis, the design, the business logic is already there. Just you are changing from one technology to another technology. So these are the three types of projects we can see in the IT companies. Now, so in this batch, I see there are many working people available. So can you guys please comment? You are working on which type of project from these three? Are you working on scratch development? Are you working on support project? Are you working on migration project? Shivam Mishra is working on support project. Ajay is working on support project. Ashwini working on support project. Uh, Benudar is working on migration project. Pratik is working on support project. Ravi working on support project. Nobody from the scratch development. Santoshi is working on the support project. Raghu working on the support project. Alpesh Patil. That means everyone is working on the support project. Now, do you understand, guys? Why I have given this count as 75 percentage? Most of the people are working on the support project only. Okay. So, anyone want to share your experience, guys? What kind of work that you are doing in the company now? Anyone want to unmute your mic and speak out? Anshul Goyal. Ashwini is working on that project. Yes, can you unmute your mic and speak out? Can you tell me what type of work you are getting in your project? Ashwini. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, sure. It is, hi, hi, sir. It is an agile story. Okay. They will give the agile stories and uh, uh, what will be for two weeks, uh, like bug fixing and creating dashboards like the Splunk dashboards. To mm -hmm. monitor the logs. Logs that of kind of, uh, yes. So she is working on the support project. So they are giving the agile stories to her to create the Splunk dashboards. So it is a ticketing project for Walt Disney. Okay, ticketing project for you. So Walt the, Disney. Yes, got it. Application is already running. Logs are generating. Those logs you need to monitor by using a log monitoring tool called Splunk. So to monitor the logs, we need to create the Splunk dashboards and we need to write the Splunk queries. So that the monitoring team will go through those dashboards, will get the logs, will do analysis. If any problem, then they will do an analysis on that bug and they will fix it. Okay, good. I got it. You are belongs to second category of the project. Okay, next one, Ravindra. Mr. Ravindra, can yeah. you hear me? Sir. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, sir. Hey, sir, I am currently I am working on migration. Uh, I hope it is migration of uh, project from one version to another. Okay. The current version uh, is existing with 2.7.2 uh, mm -hmm. of Spring Boot version with the Java 17. Uh, okay. Currently, we are focusing uh, to make them 3.1.2 since 3.1.2 is also having high vulnerabilities as per okay. our project report. That is the mm -hmm. reason we are using 3.2.5. Mm -hmm. If there is any uh, necessary changes or logical changes, that is also our uh, developer responsibility only. We need to make it intact to okay. deploy it in this. Yes, sir. How many years experience do you have, Mr. Mahindra? Just for three days back, I have completed my six years, sir. This is my seventh year running. Seventh year running. Oh, good. Congratulations, Mr. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So, so he is working on support projects. So, he, they are migrating the Spring Boot application from one version to another version. Good. Next one. Ajaj, uh, can you share your experience? Hi, Ajaj. Good morning. Hello, sir. Good morning. How yeah. many years experience do you have, man? Two years experience. Two years experience. Okay. You are working on which type of project? Uh, I was working on support project. Support project. Okay. Very good. What kind of work that you are getting daily? Basically, it was the Oracle project. It is a billing software. Okay. And we do whenever client having any issue, it will mm -hmm. create the bug. And we just mm -hmm. analyze uh, the bug using logs mm -hmm. and uh, provide it to L3 team. Mm -hmm. Okay. Part is L2. We just okay. analyze. We don't do any development. 
Okay, you are just monitoring the application and you are finding the issue and you are reporting the issue to the L2 team yes. so that they will take care of the bug fix. Yes, yes. Okay, good. So that means, is there any learning curve for you? Are you no. learning anything? Nothing. Nothing. You are not just analyzing the issue and you are yes. reporting the issue to the other team so they are fixing that issue. Yes. Okay. Good, guys. Fine. So, guys, uh, you, you got the clarity, right? So, three types of projects are there. But if you see in this batch, so there are many people already working in the IT industry as a developer, but they are working on the support project. So when they are working on the support project, some, some people who are working in the support project will not get the chance to see the code also. Will not get the chance to look into the code of our application. They will just monitor the issues and they will just create the dashboards and they will report to the other team. Other teams are going to do the bug fixing. Okay. And if anyone working in the scratch development project, they will do the coding on their own and they can learn a lot of things. That's why learning curve will be there when you go for scratch development. In the maintenance and support projects, only analysis, your analysis skills will increase, but your coding skills will not increase here. And the migration project, migration comes here. You can migrate from one technology to another technology. Or as our friend told that they are migrating from one version of the Spring Boot to another version of the Spring Boot. They are having that on the 2.x version of the Spring Boot. Now they are migrating to 3.x version of the Spring Boot. So I hope you guys got the clarity. Most of the projects are, most of the people are working on the support project only in the industry. So are you guys clear with these points? What is project and uh, why we are developing the projects? What type of projects we can see in the companies? If you are clear with this point, then I will move on to the next talk. Please respond in the chat box. I need your confirmation, guys. Please participate in the class. Don't sit idle. I need your response in the chat. If you are responding to my questions, then I will get more interest to give you more support. I want to make this session interactive. It's not like one-way traffic. I want it as two-way traffic. Okay. So please respond to the questions so that I will get encouragement to explain the class. Good. So next one, let us talk about Types of software companies, guys. So tomorrow, when you are going for the interview, first you need to understand you are giving the interview for what type of company. So based on that only, the interview pattern will be available. So many people from the previous batches I observed, whenever they get some interview call, they will message me or they will call me saying that, sir, tomorrow I have an interview. Can you tell me what kind of questions they are going to ask in the interview? Okay. So first thing here, you need to think logically. What questions they are going to ask in the interview, how I will know that? So many people, I have seen that. So many people, when they got some interview call, when their interview got scheduled, they will message me. Sir, tomorrow my interview is scheduled in this company. Could you please tell me what kind of questions they will ask in the interview? First, think logically. What questions they will ask in the tomorrow interview, how can I guess it today? Are you getting my point? Can we guess that? Interview questions, what they are going to ask, it depends on the person who is going to take your interview. Yes, sir. So today, in my company, I have an interview. So one person interview is scheduled with me. I will be the I am the final member for that. Today at 4 o'clock, I have to take one interview for the person who is having 5 years experience in the job. So, what kind of questions I'm going to ask in the interview? I don't know now. When I go to that interview panel, by looking at that person's resume, by giving whatever the questions I'm asking, based on the response he's giving, then I will ask the next question. How can I tell that? What kind of questions I will ask? It is dynamic interview, guys. Sometimes the interview will happen on the dynamic process. Based on your response, they will ask the next question. Nobody can guess what kind of questions they are going to ask in the interview. What questions I will ask in the today's interview, I don't know now. By looking at the person resume, I will ask self introduction I will ask roles and responsibilities, I will ask project. These three questions are common. After these three questions, based on the response, I will ask the next question. Are you getting my point? Many people will ask like this, sir, what kind of questions they will ask in the interview tomorrow? We don't, we can't guess that, man. Please, have some maturity. The interview questions, how can we guess what they will ask? Okay, but we can guess the pattern. 
what kind of pattern they will follow to take your interview, we can guess that. So that the pattern depends on what type of company it is. You are giving the interview for what type of company. Based on that company type, we can guess the pattern, but we cannot guess the questions. Are you clear? Good. So in the IT industry, there are so many companies are available. Okay. All those companies, we can divide into three categories again. So first category is called as product-based companies. Okay. And the second category is called as service-based companies. First category is called as product based companies, and the second category is called as service based companies. And the third category is called as outsourcing companies. Okay, so there are three types of companies in the IT industry. So if you see in the software industry, thousands of companies are available. All these companies we can categorize into three types, guys. First one is called product based company, second one is called service based company third one is called as outsourcing company sir what is the difference between these three types of companies and what will be the interview process in the what will be the interview pattern in these companies and how much package we can expect from these companies okay how the interview is going to happen how much package you are going to get it depends on the type of the company. okay so let's understand these are types of companies. Product-based companies are available. So what is the meaning of product-based companies, guys? What is the meaning of product-based companies? So these companies are going to develop the software and they will sell the software to the customers. Develop and sell software to customers. So for these companies, clients will not be available, guys. So these companies will not take the requirement from any client to develop a project. This company people will have a R&D team that the team will get some ideas. With those ideas, they will develop their own project and that project they will sell to the customers in the market. Okay. For example, if you see Microsoft, Microsoft is a product-based company. Nobody will give the requirement for the Microsoft. Microsoft R&D team will be there. They will analyze. They will get some ideas. With those ideas, they will develop the project. That project they are selling to the customers in the market. Example, Windows operating system, MS Office. These all are the software they develop and they are selling to the customers in the market. And the next one, Google. Google company is available. Google will develop the software and they will sell the software to the customers in the market. Apple. Apple is available. Okay. Facebook. Now it is called as a Meta. Meta company is available. Oracle company is available. IBM company is available. So these all companies are comes under product-based companies only. What these product-based companies will do? They will develop the project. They will develop the project with their own ideas. And they will sell the project to the customers in the market. Microsoft, Google, Apple, Meta Company, Oracle Company, IBM Company, this all comes under product-based companies only. Now, when you go for product-based company, interview pattern. Questions are not ready. Pattern I can guess. Okay? When you go for product-based company interview, they are going to focus mainly on coding test. Okay? No theoretical questions in the product based company. Coding test will be available for you. They will be asking the questions on the data structures. They will be asking the questions on the algorithms. They will ask the questions on the system design. They will ask the questions on the design patterns. They will ask questions on the design patterns. So this is the interview pattern you can see when you go for product based company they don't ask you they don't ask you anything related to theoretical theoretical questions will not be there here everything is related to coding practical data structure algorithm system design design patterns so they may ask a question like this so in the java we are having 
array list class. Now I want to create such a kind of array list class on my own. I don't want to use collections array list class. I want to create my own array list class. How do you do that? How can you develop your own array list class? Can you write the code for that? That kind of question they will ask you. And they may ask a question. In the Java, in the Java, linko list class is available. Okay. So can you tell me how to delete the middle element in the linko list? Okay. Can you write a program on the binary tree? Can you write a program on the brute force algorithm? Okay. And I want to develop one application like a WhatsApp. Can you do the system design for that application? So can you tell me what is the database design you will follow? What is the application architecture you will follow in order to develop a project like WhatsApp? Okay. I want to develop a project for the banking. Now, can you come up with your system design? So to develop a banking application, what we have to do? I will give you one day time. So can you come up with the system design for the banking application? So when you go for product-based companies, interview will not complete in one day. They will be take they will be taking one week to ten days of time to complete your interview. Are you getting my point? So when you go for product-based companies interview, within one day or two days, your interview will not be completed. One week to ten days, your interview process will happen. So they will give you one task. They will give you one or two days of time. Then you need to submit your task. It's not like a question answer. It's like a task and the implementation. When you go for product-based companies, guys, the interview pattern will be available like this. They will be conducting some coding test. They will be asking questions on the data structures, algorithms, system design, and the design. So that's why, that's why interview process will be difficult in the product-based company. So when you go for product-based companies, guys, interview process will be interview process will be lengthy and difficult. Okay, some product-based companies may take one month of time to complete your interview process. So five to six rounds of interview will be there. Coding test will be available. They will give you the task and they will give you the time and you need to complete that. And when it comes to packaging structure in the product-based company, guys. High package will be provided. High packages will be provided in the product based companies. For example, so the product based companies may give you the packages like this years of experience, years of experience multiplied by 10 to 15 lakhs also they will provide. Okay. Your year of experience multiplied by 10 to 15 lakhs also they will ask. That means if you have two years experience, you can get a 20 lakhs package also in the product-based company. If you have three years experience, you can get the 30 lakhs package also. Amazon also comes under this kind of product-based company only. Flipkart also comes under product-based company only. So there are so many companies available. I have just given some famous names. Okay, now, so interview process will be lengthy and difficult when you go for product-based companies and the product-based companies will provide high packages. So years of experience multiplied by 10 lakhs also they can offer. Years of experience multiplied by 10 lakhs also they will offer when you go for product-based company interview. Are you guys getting my point? Are you guys getting my point? Come on guys. You understand what is product-based company? Product-based companies will develop the projects and sell the projects to the customers. Will develop the projects and will sell the project to the customers. Okay. Interview pattern, coding test, data structures, algorithms, system design, design pattern. Interview process will be lengthy and difficult when you go for product-based company. 
Hybrid packages will be provided. Okay. Next one. Second category of the companies that is called service based companies will be available. Okay. Service based companies will be available. This is the second category of the product. Product companies. So, what is the meaning of this? Service based companies in the market. So, develop the projects. Develop the projects. Develop the project based on client requirement. Okay. Product based companies, they will develop the project and send to the customers there. Now, what about the service based companies, guys? Service based companies will develop the project based on the client requirement. For example, PCS. Infosys, HCL, Capgemini, Cognigent, okay, Accenture, Deloitte, Wipro, Accenture, Deloitte, Wipro, Tecam, Tecam, etc. So there are so many companies available which are comes under service-based category. So what is the meaning of this service-based category, guys? These companies are going to Develop the project based on the client requirement. So now I want to start my business. For my business, I need one project. Okay. I'm not a technical person. For example, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. I don't know about any technology. I can't develop the project. Then I will go to one software company and I will give my requirement to the company. Then company people will develop the project based on my requirement. That means they are providing the service. Okay, so the company which is developing the project based on the client requirement is called as service based company. These are called as service based company. So, what is the interview process in the service based company? Interview pattern. Okay, so in the service based companies, interview pattern. Nowadays, these people are also asking the questions on the DS. Nowadays, for every developer, not only Java, if you go for any technology, for the developer, they are conducting coding tests, they are asking data structures. Okay, data structures and algorithms is the most important thing nowadays if you want to track any software developer interview. Then, once the DSA questions are completed, they are going to focus on the latest technologies. Okay, when you go for product based companies, when you go for product based companies, they will not ask any questions from the Spring Boot microservices somehow. So the complete interview will happen on these technologies too. But when you go for service-based companies, these companies should develop the project based on the client requirement, right? So that's why first they will check your coding skill by using DSC. Then they are going to ask some questions on the latest technologies. Okay. So latest technologies they will consider and they will be asking the questions on core Java. They will be asking questions on the Spring Boot. They will be asking the questions on the microservices. They will ask questions related to security. Security. And they will ask questions related to cloud. And they will ask the questions related to tools also. Tools also. Okay. So in the service-based companies, interview pattern will be available like this. First, they will check your coding skill. And they will check the data structures, whether you are good in the data structures or not. Then, if you are good in the DSA, then they will be checking your core Java skill, like Java's, Lambda's, Stream APIs, the latest features in the Java, multi-threading and all that part. Then mainly they will be focusing on Spring Boot microservices because nowadays every company is developing the project by using Spring Boot and microservices. And they will check the security knowledge and cloud, cloud computing. And they will ask some questions related to tools also. So this is the interview pattern you can see in the service-based companies. But in the product-based companies, it is completely different. Okay. And coming to package structure. When you go for service-based companies, what is the package structure you can expect? Package structure. So here, when compared with the, when compared with the product-based companies, service-based companies will give you less value. Okay, so when you compare the package in the product based company and the service based company, the package will be less in the service based company. Package structure. So here, years of experience, years of experience, 
multiplied by 4 to 6 lakhs. Multiplied by 4 to 6 lakhs or 4 to 5 lakhs sometimes. Suppose if you have 3 years experience up to 15 lakhs package you can expect. Okay. So if you have 2 years experience then 8 lakhs package up to 10 lakhs package you can expect for 2 years. For 3 years 12 to 15 lakhs package you can expect. Okay, sometimes it will go change from 3 to 5 also. If you have 2 years experience, they may give you from 6 lakhs to 10 lakhs, that bracket. In that range, you can get. So, I have 2 years experience as a Java full stack developer. So, I can expect 6 to 10 lakhs package in between. In between, based on the company budget, they will decide your salary structure. But most of the service based companies will follow this bracket. So your years of experience multiplied by 3 to 5 LPA, they will offer. Okay. So when you go for product-based companies, so 10 to 15 LPA, they will offer. Years of experience multiplied by 10 to 15. So here, years of experience multiplied by 3 to 5 lakhs will be available the service-based companies. Are you guys clear with my point? What is product-based company? And what is service-based company? Product-based company will develop and sell the software to the customers. This is the interview pattern in the product-based companies. And this is the package structure in the product-based companies. And when you go for service-based companies, these people will develop the project based on the client requirement. And this is the interview pattern. This is the interview pattern in the service-based companies. And this is the Package structure in the service based company. If you are clear with this point, please comment on the chat box. Are you guys clear? Able to follow me? Please respond. Respond. And here, guys, when you are working in the service based company, in service based companies, in service based companies, on-site opportunities will be available. Okay. When you go for service-based companies, on-site opportunities will be available. On-site opportunities, nothing but, they will send you to the client location. For example, my project client is from USC. Then my company may send me to on-site. So some people will go to US on the project work. Nothing but they are going for on-site. Based on the client requirement, based on the client requirement, company will send the people to on-site. On-site opportunities will be available when you are working in service For example, I'm working in TCS, for example. I'm working in the TCS from three years. My client is in US. Then TCS company will send me to USA for three months of time or for six months of time. An on-site opportunity will be available. When you go for on-site, that company's salary structure, that US salary structure will be applicable for us. Here we are getting the salary in the rupees. Once you go to on-site, you will get the salary in the dollars. Okay? You can get more amount. You will get more salary when you go for on-site. That's why. So our Indians are having a lot of craze for on-site opportunity. So in the service-based companies, on-site opportunities will be available for the best team member. Who is technically strong, functionally strong, who knows the end-to-end -end of the application. Those people will go to client location for work. Some days they will go to client location. I will tell you the visa process also, what type of visas that we can apply if we want to work in the different country. What is work permit? What is uh, business visa? What is L1 visa? What is H1 visa? I will give you some clarity on the visa part also. So many software engineers are going to US and they are doing the jobs in the US to get the more money. So what is the process they will follow? What type of visas they are applying? Especially if they want to go for US, what is the process they are following? I will take some session on that also. Okay? Just keep in your mind. So if you are working in the service-based company, on-site opportunities will be available. Company will file your visa. Company will send you to the client location for a few days to work in the client location. Good. Next one. Outsourcing companies are available, guys. Nowadays, a lot of business is happening with the outsourcing companies. Okay. 
outsourcing companies are available. What is the meaning of this outsourcing companies? Okay, these companies, these companies will provide will provide skilled labor to other companies. That means will provide will provide employees to other companies. Employees nothing but skilled labor. So will provide employees to other companies. Will provide employees to other companies. So what is the meaning of this outsourcing? So what is the meaning of this outsourcing is, so if you observe, assume that there is a company called ABC company is available. Okay. ABC company is available. You got selected for the ABC company. For example, I'm talking. ABC company is available. You got selected for the ABC company. ABC company is called as your parent company or it is called as your payroll company. But actually, you will be working for the another company. Okay, for example, you are working for another company called JPM, JP Morgan. Now, you got selected for the ABC company, but ABC company will send you to JPMC, JP Morgan Chase to do the project. This is called client company. You are the employee. You got selected for the interview in the ABC company. But where you will do the work, guys? ABC company is your payroll company, but daily you will go to JPMC office. So that means you are you are permanent employee. You are permanent employee for the ABC company, and you are contract employee for the JP Morgan. Okay, so you are permanent for the ABC company. You got selected for the ABC company interview. ABC company will pay the salary for you. They will run your pay. But ABC company selling the people to the JPMC on contract basis. JP Morgan. Okay, you got selected for one company. That the company is sold out to another company. You the company is selling the people to other company on contract basis. Six months you will work for the JPMC project. So you are a contract employee to the JPMC. Daily you will go to JPMC office. Once the six months of the project is completed, then again you will go back to ABC company. Then they will send you to another company. Uh, so such kind of a business is there in the software industry. Those kind of companies, such kind of companies are called as outsourcing. So what is the role of the outsourcing company? Outsourcing company will provide the employees to other companies on contract basis. On contract basis. Nowadays in the IT industry, this kind of business is One company will take your interview, they will send you to another company. Sir, what is the benefit? ABC company is giving 6 lakhs package for you. But they are selling you to the JPMC company for the 10 lakh package. So 4 lakhs margin they will take from your job. They will give you the job for the less package. They will send you to the other company for the high package. So this company who is giving the salary to you is called as a payroll company. And you are working for some other company project, right? That is called your client company. Nowadays, nowadays many service-based companies are doing this outsourcing business also. Oh. Capgemini is doing outsourcing. Cognizant is doing outsourcing. HCL is doing outsourcing. Tech Mahendra doing outsourcing. Wipro is doing outsourcing. So what is the meaning of that? You will get selected for the HCL interview, but the HCL will send you to Microsoft company to do the work. You are not a direct employee to the Microsoft. You are contract employee to the Microsoft. You got selected to the HCL interview. HCL is your parent company, but the HCL will send you to the Microsoft office for one year. So you are permanent employee to HCL. You are contract employee to Microsoft. So the company which is providing the employees to other companies on the contract basis is called an outsourcing company. So nowadays, many service-based companies are doing, many service-based companies are doing outsourcing business. Okay. Many service-based companies are doing 
outsourcing business. Okay. Now, so if you see, Cognizant is available or Capgemini is available. Capgemini employees are working for Synchrony. Synchrony Bank is available. Synchrony Bank. Okay. Capgemini people are working for Synchrony Bank. And next one, Tech Mahindra people are working for Tech Mahindra people are working for TBS, TBS Bank. So HCL is a service-based company, Capgemini is a service-based company, TechMe is a service-based company. HCL sending the employees to Microsoft, Capgemini sending the employees to Synchrony, Tech Mahindra sending the employees to DBS. Okay. So Microsoft is a broad-based company, Synchrony is a broad-based company, TBS is a broad-based company. Synchrony is my previous company. It is a bank in the US. Okay. Now, in my team, in my team, Synchrony employees available, HCL employees available, Cognizant employees available. I'm working for a broad-based company. So in my team, other company members are also working on the country. That means HCL, Capgemini, Tech Mahindra, Wipro, which companies are providing the services to the clients as well as providing the services to other companies also. So one company providing the employees to other companies on contract basis, such a kind of companies are called as outsourcing companies. Nowadays in the IT industry, most of the jobs are related to like this. You will get selected for one company that a company will send you to another company for the project. Outsourcing business is there. Nowadays, so many service-based companies are doing this outsourcing business. So many service-based companies are doing this outsourcing business. Are you guys able to understand what is payroll company and what is client company? So, which company providing the salary to you? That company is called your payroll company. For which company project you are working? That company is called as your client. Are you getting my point? Are you clear with the three types of companies we have in the IT industry? Product-based companies available, service-based companies available, and outsourcing companies also. If you are clear with this one, could you please comment on the chat box? Could you please comment on the chat box? So nowadays in the IT industry, most of the jobs are contract jobs only. Nowadays in the IT industry, most of the jobs are contract jobs only. Okay? Good. Perfect. Consultancy means outsourcing company only. They will take your interview, they will select and they will send you to other companies. Consultancy also will do outsourcing business. Consultancy also will do outsourcing business. Someone is asking, sir, can you explain about H1 visa? Sure, sir. Definitely, I will talk about H1 visa. What is visa process? How the on-site opportunities are there? I will talk about those. Good. Thank you, guys.